Hello students, in this video we are going to start a new chapter, System of Particles and Rotational Motion. In this part of the video we will be discussing uh, what are the different types of movements possessed by rigid bodies, what is actually meant by a rigid body, uh, different types of its uh, different types of motions possessed by a rigid body as well as center of mass, location, velocity and acceleration. What is a rigid body? Uh, it's a body has which has a perfect and definite shape which is unchanging as the body moves. Uh, it's a system of particles in which distance between particles do not change. But what we can say is no body is truly rigid. Even if we uh, it appears to be rigid, we feel like it is rigid but it is not perfectly rigid. Every rigid body is what we uh, see in our surroundings. They undergo some kind of bending or warping uh, or dislocations uh, of their particles and all that. Rigid bodies possess different types of motion. Uh, translational motion, rotational motion, precision are the three different types of motions possessed by rigid bodies. Now we will discuss what is translation, translatory motion or translational motion. So here uh, we have in this figure uh, rectangular block sliding down an inclined plane without any sideways movement. The block is a rigid body. It moves uh, down the plane in such a way that all particles of the body are moving together. You can see P1, P2, two particles are shown in this figure. They both are moving together with that body. That is, they have same velocity at any instant of time. The rigid body here in this example, that is this uh, block, is having a pure translatory motion. So what is pure translatory motion? In pure translatory motion, at any instant of time, Every particle of the body has the same velocity. That means every particle of the body has same direction of motion and same speed. Now consider the movement of this cylinder. The cylinder is having a translatory motion because it is moving from A to B. It is rolling down. So uh, we can say it is a kind of translatory motion uh, but the particles of this cylinder that is P1, P2, P3, P4 whatever we selected they have different velocities. So this kind of movement even though it is translatory motion it is not a pure translation. Next kind of motion possessed by the rigid body is rotational motion. In rotation of a body about a fixed axis every particle of the body moves in a circle which lies in a plane perpendicular to the axis and has its center on the axis. So you see here example of a rotatory motion, a ceiling fan is rotating. Its axis you can see is d d dash. d d dash is its axis, axis of rotation we call. Then you can see uh, a point a on the body which makes a circle, point b on the middle of the blade which makes another circle, point C makes another bigger circle. So all these circles are lying perpendicular to the line D D dash. So that is the meaning of uh, this sentence over here. Every particle of the body moves in a circle that you saw here which lies in the plane perpendicular to the axis and has its center on the axis. All these circles are ha having the center on the axis. They all are uh, coaxial. Next is a type of motion called precision. It's a kind of a rotatory motion in which uh, the axis uh, is moving along with the body. Even though the axis is fixed at one point, you can see the axis moves ar along with this top here. You see this circle, the axis moves along this circle. Top is an example. Similarly, a rotating pedal fan or a table fan, we can say it's an example. This is the axis of the pedal fan and uh, the leaves of the fan rotates perpendicular to it. So, uh, and you know, the this about this axis, it has a 
movement this fixed axis is moving along with the body similar to the top so the in precision the axis moves round with the body during rotation now we will understand what is meant by center of mass of a system of particle center of mass of a body or system of a particle is defined as a point at which whole of the mass of the body or all the masses of a system of particles are appearing to be concentrated center of mass of a system of particle moves as if all the mass of the system was concentrated at that point and all the external forces were applied on that point so it is a representation of the body's movement so center of mass is uh, similar to center of gravity where center of gravity says uh, it is an imaginary point in the body where the entire weight of the body is said to be concentrated At the same time center of mass definition says it is the point where the entire mass of the system is appearing to be concentrated find the location of a center of mass uh, as in this figure we have a coordinate system uh, in which we select two points one is uh, over here and the other over here and we call it as p1 and p2 from the origin the distances are r1 and r2 respectively now let us imagine this is uh, this two mass points center of mass is over here so to that the distance is straight line distance we give as r and call it as r c o m the location of the center of mass now how to find the center of mass location the formula is r c o m is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this is our uh, center of mass location formula in a two body system or a two particle system now if m1 is equal to m2 where will be the location of the center of mass so we say r is equal to uh, it is m r1 plus m r2 divided by 2m so it is uh, r1 plus r2 divided by 2 that means it is at the average distance of r1 and r2 of this two particle system now to find the uh, th uh, in a three dimensional space if the bo body is uh, constituted in a three dimensional space the coordinates needed for location of center of mass may be x c o m we have to find out which is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2 similarly we have to find y c o m m1 y1 plus m2 y2 divided by m1 plus m2 similarly z c o m also is needed that is m1 z1 plus m2 z2 plus divided by m1 plus m2 so, so these are the equations we use for two particle system if we have a n particle system r c o m equation we have to write as sigma i equal to 1 to n m i r i divided by m now we can find the velocity of the center of mass so we know the position of center of mass is m1 r1 plus m2 r2 divided by m1 plus m2 where m1 plus m2 is m actually so uh, when you find the velocity what we have to do is we have to differentiate the position so dr by dt that is d by dt of uh, 1 by m into m1 r1 plus m2 r2 this is for a two particle system we are doing so 1 by m is a constant we take out and in the bracket m1 is a constant only r1 can be differentiated similarly m2 into dr2 by dt so this will give us 1 by m into 
m1 v1 dr1 by dt is v1 similarly m2 v2 and if you take this capital letter m that is the total mass of the system to the left side we have m into v com is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 similarly we can do acceleration as well from the this equation we can find out acceleration so this will give equation number 2 and this will give us equation number 3 so if equation number 2 is differentiated that is dv by dt if we do we get acceleration so that is uh, d by dt of 1 by m into m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so as before 1 by m is a constant we take out m1 into dv1 by dt plus m2 into dv2 by dt so this is 1 by m into m1 a1 plus m2 a2 because first differential of velocity is acceleration so if you take it into the left side we were finding a so m into a is equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 we get so this is f uh, the force applied on the center of mass which is equal to f1 plus f2 so we know that the force acting on the center of mass is purely an external force so what we get is f center of mass is f external internal forces cancel each other in a system so the force acting on the center of mass will be purely the external force only the external forces can move the center of mass of a system linear momentum of center of mass can be found from the second formula what we had our second formula was like this v c o m is equal to 1 by m into m1 uh, v1 plus m2 v2 so we will find out m v c o m is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so as we know mass into velocity is momentum so p c o m is equal to p1 plus p2 we get this is the linear momentum equation now we will do a simple numerical in which uh, uh, we have to find out the center of mass location it's an hcl molecule separation between the nuclei of the two atoms is about 1.27 angstrom find the approximate location of center of mass of the molecule given that chlorine atom is 35.5 times massive as hydrogen so we'll take mass of hydrogen as 1 and mass of chlorine as 35.5 now uh, r1 we will uh, consider hcl molecule like this h over here and uh, cl over here they have a separation of 1.27 angstrom so this one is uh, found to be at the zero zero position this is at 1.270 position in the coordinate system so hydrogen is considered to be at the origin so what is the position formula rcom is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this is m1 m1 is 1 r1 is 0 plus m2 35.5 into r2 is 1.27 into 10 raised to minus 10 divided by m1 plus m2 that is 36.5 answer is 1.24 into 10 raised to minus 10 meter or 1.24 angstrom now in the next question we have three mass particles 1 kg mass uh, like uh, in the origin 2 kg mass over here at the position b and 3 kg mass over here at position c this is an equilateral triangle 
So what we have to do is we have to locate where is uh, 2 kilogram kept. So this is 0, 0. This will be uh, 1, 0. This 2 kgs we have to find out. So this distance is 0.5 meter. So x axis is 0.5. Y axis we have to find out. To find the y axis, what you have to do is this altitude you have to find from this right triangle. So, what will we do? Tan 60 we will write. Tan 60 is equal to opposite side, that is that height, divided by high adjacent side, that is 0 0.5. Tan 60 is root 3. So, we get root 3 into 0.5 root 3 into 0.5 is equal to h or we say 0.5 root 3 is the location y location of b. Now we will find out the location of center of mass of this system. So for that uh, we will write the formula of x com that is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. So this is our first mass. A is our first mass. B is our second mass. C is our third mass. So what will we do? m1 x1 that is uh, 1 kg into 0 plus 2 kg into 0.5 is x plus 3 kg into 1 whole divided by 1 plus 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3. So, this will give us 1 plus 3 whole divided by 6, which is 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 meters. Similarly, YCOM we will find out. YCOM is equal to M1Y1 plus M2Y2 plus M3Y3 divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. So again uh, 1 into 0 plus 2 into 0.5 root 3 plus uh, 3 into 0 divided by 6 again. So this is root 3 by 6. So, this is root 3 by 2 into 3. Uh, that means root 3 by 2 root 3 into root 3. So, this root 3 root 3 cancels. We get 1 by 2 root 3 meter as the y location. So, what is our center of mass location? Center of mass is located at 2 by 3 meters along the y axis and 1 by 2 root 3 meters along the y axis. 2 by 3 meter along x axis and 1 by 2 by 3 meter along the y axis. So that will be the location of the center of mass of this system.